Hi, everybody. It's Spoopy for the last time. I just wanted to thank you all for watching this series. I know it's a scary game, and scary games are scary. And you've all been really brave, and I'm really impressed. So thanks again for watching. And don't worry about other scary stuff out there, because you know I'll always be watching and there to warn you about scary stuff. Because I'm always watching you. Ooh, ee, ooh, ha, ha. Bing, bang, walla, walla, bing, bang. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah. Okay, here we go. Welcome, friends. It is I, Rose Last Garf, and it's time to look at Creepy Catherine Face coming apart a little bit. So you can see with the other ones, so the Catherine Face... It was all, it would slowly break apart as the game went on. And now we have complete Catherine face and it breaks up a little bit, but it comes back together. And Jinx feels like that kind of goes in line with her feelings about how you're not quite human anymore. And this concept of they're human, but they're having a hard time keeping it together because they're not really human anymore. They're just scans of humans. So that's an interesting thought there. So we're going to talk about the ending now and then at the end of this whole thing. We're going to summarize and just talk about some interesting things through this thing. And just, just talk about the game. Um... The ending of the game. No twist. So, the surprise is there's no twist here. Like, looking for the twist, you could hear me, I'm like, Alright, where's the twist? Where's the twist? There's no twist. And it's a surprise to not have a twist these days. And it feels underwhelming not having one, but at the same time, I guess it's fine. There's no twist there. It's just... There's some things that made you think there might be a twist, but there's no twist. And it's kind of... It's kind of weird. No, like... The one problem with the game is, you have all these decisions, but they have no real consequences in the game, besides what you feel about it. And that's both good and bad. Like, how I felt about ending Simon 2, how I felt about, uh, killing Sarah, the last human. Like, those decisions are with what, like, killing the WoW. Those decisions only mean anything in your head canon, but they don't actually have any consequences in the game itself. And that is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of unfortunate you don't really feel like you've actually done anything, but you can kind of, in your imagination, feel like you did something at the same time, I guess. So I'm both ways on that, but the ending's kind of really disappointing. It just kind of just ends. You're like, oh, we're done here. Okay. So it peters out in the end. Like, there was a lot of opportunity for some big crazy things to happen, but then they don't happen. Let's just go through the whole thing. So, you got the opening with uh, Ashley and Munchie and all that stuff, and drinking the stuff, and just, well, I was just dicking around with, with the area, and we get there, and we get the scan going on and everything. And right then, I'm like, okay, are we in a, you know, um, are we doing like a total recall? Is he in a scan? Is he repairing himself? I thought it was an interesting theory that the WoW is, is maybe his mind trying to repair some some way. I thought it was an interesting theory, but that doesn't go anywhere because that's not actually what happened. He's actually just a scan. He's like, oh, hey, the twist came early. The twist is you're a scan. Okay. Well, that's not really a twist. That's the journey going forward. So you're in the starting area, there's the WoW and everything. And you're in Upsilon. So apparently, there's a prequel video, which I'm not going to watch because meh. Um, it takes place in Upsilon, and it has to do with Imogen Reed, who's the body that you inhabit. It has to do with her trying to kill the WoW, and she dies trying to stop the WoW. She doesn't, she, she fails, obviously. And we run into Carl, and we get Carl killed. Apparently, it's possible to get through without killing Carl, but someone might just be lying to me. Because I have no idea. It seems like the only way through is to kill Carl. But maybe you can't kill Carl. Who knows? Maybe that's a thing. But you get through Epsilon. And then we get to the train station. We find Amy. And she's on a defibrillator. She's on a defibrillator. And we chose not to kill her there. Like, we, I smartly realized I can pull one. Maybe it's enough. And the, the train's like, okay, so you don't have full power. It might crash. And it does crash. If you pull bo both and kill Amy, apparently there's a different message. And the message is just that you have unstable power. Something you still crash. So... There's no real consequence, this is the problem. There's no real consequence to anything you do, besides what you feel towards yourself, I suppose. But there's just no difference there. Of course, when we're, when we, we're dealing with the machines that think they're humans, of course, it's very it's an interesting mystery there. Like, why do they think they're human? They eventually we learn it's the WoW doing that and all that stuff, and then we end up in Lambda. And in Lambda is where we meet the thing we're not supposed to look at, and we also meet Catherine there, and Catherine... She, I guess she got put into that machine in the first place, and then she talks to you. And the thing is, Catherine realizes she's a machine pretty early on, I'm guessing. While you, you thought you were a human, then you realize you're a suit. And this is where things are kind of interesting in that that explains why Carl thought he was human. is because somehow, when you're in the machine bodies, you, you still see yourself as human in them, which is an interesting thing. Now... 
is it Lambda or at Delta you learn something about uh, about Simon, and we'll say that when we get to Delta. So, on the way to Delta, I got sleepy, right, and doing all this puzzle stuff, and I get mad, and I start murdering things. I murder a bot, and then I murder Robin, and then we end up, uh, well, also leading up to Delta is all that, um, or Delta is leading up to all that, uh, Acres setup, like, we see all that stuff about Acres in that area, and then we end up over at Theta. Like, we kill our way to Theta, in a way. And, um, the thing about, uh, that, at some point we learn, maybe we learn at Theta. At some point we learn, if you read one of the files, it says that the WoW has activated a brain scan at Upsilon. So apparently, the WoW created Simon. How it does it is the weird part about the whole thing. Because Simon is in a diving suit of Emojin Reed. And it's got the core chip plugged into the body, and I guess it has structural gel in it, I'm assuming. And then it's in the freaking pilot seat and gets scanned, and Simon gets scanned in. What's going on here is the WoW is trying to is trying to preserve humanity, and it doesn't know a good way to do it, which is why we see a bunch of bodies just stuck to the WoW. It's trying to keep them alive. It's why we see Amy with a uh, with a breathing apparatus next to her, because it's trying to keep her alive. And it's also why it's scanning people into machines. It's trying to keep humanity alive in different ways. It's keeping the people who are alive alive through whatever means by keeping them in some coma state and just binding with them. While as it's putting scans into machines to try to preserve humanity in that way as well. And then it does the same to Simon apparently. But what's weird is just how it does it. It combines a dead body with a cortex chip and then scans into the cortex chip to make Simon. So it's a really weird idea that the WoW has to do that in the first place. Because I, I was wondering, who the hell made Simon? And it's apparently the WoW that did it, and the file tells you that. But it's just really weird. It was very weird. But apparently the WoW made Simon. I thought it was some mystery. It was like, what the hell made Simon? Who made it? Who has what to gain from that? I thought maybe Catherine made Simon, and she's just playing him along. Which would have been interesting. Or maybe it's uh, that one disappearing guy, who by the way isn't Akers. That's Johan Ross, which we'll go over in a bit. Acres is a different thing. Acres is the thing that grabs you and puts you up against a wall at one point and you have that dream. And this is where it makes more thoughts, and that is when you get grabbed and put into the connected to the WoW for a moment and you break yourself out, you have a dream before that. You're a brain scan having a dream, which is very interesting. So I'm like, there's there's gotta be a twister where he's in the scan or something and he's gonna pop out because he's this is another dream. Like he's having a dream about Ashley. He's having a dream. He's a, he's a, he's a scan apparently, but he's having dreams. So that's the thing. It's like, how could a scan have a dream? And so that was interesting, but no, it's, that's just what's going on. And of course there at Theta, we have the whole continuity stuff with Mark Sarang. And apparently Sarang's something special because he has special files about Alpha. All that stuff, but he kills himself for continuity. And like, that's an idea, but it's a very selfish idea. And also, how the hell does that work? Like, he, he kills himself so that there's only one version of him, so that it's his consciousness going over to the Ark. But they're copies. It's not a consciousness transfer, it's a, it's a copy thing. And that gets slammed into her face later on in Omicron. But back at Theta, like, we get the whole brain scan thing and all that stuff. And if it wasn't clear, well, we talked about it. It's The WoW was scanning people in the first place, trying to do this the whole scan idea. It made the pilot seats in, into scanners, so it could, I guess, preserve humanity through scans. And that's how... Catherine Chun gets the idea. That's why she does the arc and all that stuff. And because of the suicides, her project gets stopped. But her and the team go forward anyway, because they want to at least preserve humanity through the arc, and so they go forward anyway with that. And of course, our, uh, Acres and his proxies happen. So there's these there's masses of meat that are bugging you, and they're the proxies. And then there's Acres himself, who's the one that grabs you. I thought Acres was the other guy. I did not know those meat was Acre. One of the meats was Acres. I thought those were his pets, which are called proxies. But he's one of them. So that surprised me. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Because I, I read the wiki after all this. That's why I'm summing this all up so you get an idea what the hell is actually going on. Then we get to Omicron. And we're in Omicron. Johan Ross is that guy who keeps disappearing and reappearing. And then there's this stuff going on with Rayleigh. And then there's stuff going on with the exploding heads. And then there's Simon 2 and Simon 3. So, Johan Ross is there, and Johan Ross is the guy who was observing the WoW when it first happened. So he's been watching the WoW, and he's been watching it grow, and he's been seeing what it's been doing. And Johan Ross leaves Alpha to uh, 
to go warn everyone about the WoW so they can destroy the WoW because he feels like what the WoW is doing is wrong. And we know that later on because he tries to get us to kill the WoW. But there is a moment when we get to the bottom of the sea where we find a dead body that's just been ripped apart that was named Glasser. Johan Ross was with Glasser. I'm like, okay, we're going to find that body later. He's like, no, we don't find that body because Johan Ross actually makes it up. Problem is he's in a coma or something and he's been affected by the structure gel that the WoW has. So and it puts him in a coma, but he's not fully gone, and he's up in Omicron. And at Omicron, he somehow gets a, gets it across to Rayleigh that they need to make it a special structural gel that they can use to kill the WoW. And, and of course, we see Rayleigh's dead body is the suit that we use to make Simon 3. And what happens is Johan Ross says a quote, and I remember him saying it, but I don't remember it exactly, and that is saying that the girl, she figured it out. She she made what was needed to kill the WoW, but the WoW shrieked. Like, she made the gel, but the WoW shrieked. And this explains what happened to Omicron with all the exploded heads. Rayleigh figures out how to destroy the WoW, and she's on her way to go down to kill the WoW. The WoW figures it out and blows up everyone's heads at Omicron. It blows up the black boxes, and that clue we get... We get the clue to that because we're on the way there, underwater, and we find that one guy where his black box kind of burst and it killed him. And that's what happened. The black boxes got burst, it blew everyone's heads off, and that's why everyone's dead when you get the Omicron. That's why all their heads are popped off. It is because the WoW was defending itself at some point in the past and it killed them all. And so you're dealing with that situation. You got like the, the scary chick, which uh, we had to sneak by and all this stuff because the WoW still, of course, trying to recreate humanity. And we put ourselves into Rayleigh's body. And of course, Simon 2 and Simon 3 happened. And this point, so what I w wasn't completely clear is, Simon 2 is put in a sleep state by Catherine. Unfortunately, she didn't put him in a sleep state fast enough, so Simon 3, of course, hears Simon 2, he freaks the hell out. He thought it was going to be a consciousness transfer, he, but she's like, no, it's a, it's a copy. We can't do consciousness transfers, that's not a thing we can do. And of course, Simon freaks out, he stops, and then she gives him the choice to either kill Simon 2 or not. And, of course, I chose not to. So what's going to happen is Simon 2 is going to wake up eventually from the coma that Catherine put him in, and he's going to be stuck there in Omicron. I'm just going to believe that Simon finds a way out. I'm just going to believe it. just going to believe it. Optimistically, that Simon somehow, no, just dates that tech chick. You know, that, that cyber crazy chick that nearly tried to kill him? Somehow they get together. I don't know. Or the WoW does something there. Because the WoW is trying to figure things out. And then so we're going down, we're going down the elevator, and we're in Rayleigh's body going down bomb sea. Of course, Simon's freaking out, talking about like, no, no, you got the real one here, and the fake one's over there. And it's like, no, she just explained a moment ago that you're a copy, but you're not getting it. And Catherine doesn't want to explain it again because she doesn't want to make him freak out more. And then so you're going down the elevator, and then well, stuff with Johan Ross happens, and you finally get down there. We see Glass's body. We're on our way over to Tau, and stuff at Tau happens like uh, so. We find, uh, we, we run into a power suit, right? Like a haunted power suit that could kill us. And we get away from it. That's the body of Jin Yoshida. That's one of the five people that went down there uh, with Catherine uh, to, uh, to do the Ark. And that's one of the ones and we get clues about, we find out that the Ark uh, did not get shot. They brought the Ark back, but Catherine's not with the group for some reason. You're like, what the hell happened there and all that stuff. And then we find Sarah Linwall. The last living human, if you don't count Amy, or the people who are stuck to the WoW. She's not connected to the WoW, that's it. She's just right there. She gives you the Ark, and she asks you to kill her. And it's your choice to kill her or not. And she tells you, be safe or whatever when you leave. I couldn't do it, come on. Killing the last, making humanity extinct, I couldn't do it. Well, what was interesting is, it would have been interesting if, as you're walking away, she pushes the button herself. That would have been an interesting thing, because you're like, damn, humanity's done. That would have been an interesting moment, but instead they just give you the choice, and then you just you make your choice. You either kill her or you don't. I couldn't kill her, so I didn't. And I left with the uh, with the Ark. And then we have all this, some, we can look at some of the butt stuff going on with some of the people there. You see some people who are more integrated with the WoW, like some of the tech, more tech bodies going on there. You see some people just dying and stuff like that. And you hear them talking about they make the right choice or whatever, or just uh, stuff with Catherine. And of course, you eventually find Catherine, but before that, we go to Alpha, where we find the WoW and Johan Ross. Now, the choice there, um, 
I could not kill the WoW because I'm like, the WoW is trying to do something. It It's it's doing it wrong right now. It's just preserving people kind of weird. But I'm like, the WoW's trying. And also, it's been helping me along the way, in a way, so I don't really want to kill the WoW, so I didn't. Johan Ross dies either way, but Leviathan kills him either way, which is disappointing. No, no matter what you do, Leviathan kills Johan Ross. And that's it. Now, what Jinx thinks would have been interesting is if Johan Ross, when he pulls you back, he screams, I made you, which would have been very interesting. It would have been more interesting if Johan Ross made you in the beginning, and your enti his entire mission for you is to go down there and kill the, uh, to kill the WoW. That would have been an interesting thing. Or Catherine manipulated you. Instead, it's just the WoW made you, and the WoW potentially made its own demise if you actually killed the WoW. Which I guess is interesting on its own, but it's just, it's just so weird that you got made by the WoW for me. It's just... There was more interesting plot points that could have happened at that, but no, that's just what it is there, and there you go. And then, of course, after Alpha, we end up at Fee, and we find the dead Catherine. And this is a missed opportunity, because prior to this, though, Simon shows he kind of understands the whole copy thing, because he asks Catherine, what if we run into living Catherine? What if we, she's alive? What are you going to do? And she's like, I don't want to think about that. It shows Simon understands copies, and yet he doesn't understand it for himself for some reason. And that's kind of a human thing, where we don't really register something for ourselves sometimes, even though we understand it, in a way. But we find dead Catherine, and we tell Catherine what kind of what happened to her, that she died by an accident, not that they killed her, though Catherine thinks they killed her anyway. And it, would have, it, it does miss the opportunity of a living Catherine, because that would have been a really interesting weirdness going on there. And Jinx had an interesting idea as well, and that is... Um, when you get to the end, when you're, when you're copying, uh, Kat Catherine and Simon over to the Ark, what if it was a choice of copying the current ones? Like, you could put Ka uh, Catherine into the Ark, but you had to choose whether you would send the Catherine that's been with you to copy over the current one that's in the Ark, or to just let it be. And say there's also a Simon there as well. Do you copy yourself over, or do you let it be? That would have been a very interesting choice to make at the end, but instead you don't make a choice, you just shoot them off. And so that's too bad there. So you just have Catherine in there, you have Simon. There's a chance there's still two Catherines in there. There's a chance there's maybe two Simons in there as well, because Catherine was the first scan. How could she not have been the Ark in the first place? So there might be two Catherines, but they will have two different experiences. And of course there's a Simon 4, because he's in the Ark, and there you go. And of course Simon freaks out. Like Simon does it earlier when we kill a robot, he freaks out about killing a robot, and Catherine's like, get over it. And it happens here again. Simon freaks out. Catherine's like, get over it. We did our job. Thanks thanks to what we did, humanity will live for thousands of years in space. And, and versions of us will be up there. And they'll be able to, well, enjoy being human in a in an AI thing for thousands of years. We did a good job. It was a, it was a noble thing we did. Simon keeps freaking out. And it pisses off Catherine. So this is what happens. Catherine freaking out at him goes to the point that she overloads herself and she shorts out. That's why Simon's alone at the bottom of the sea, at the end of the whole thing. And it's like, how does Simon not get it at this point? Why is he freaking out and stuff like that? And, like, I thought he was like, okay, Simon's stuck with Catherine at the bottom of the sea. At least he has company. There you go. But no, because of his freak out, she freaks out and she shorts out. So now Simon's stuck at the bottom of the sea alone. Optimistically, you could believe maybe Simon fixes her and then they're just stuck at the bottom of the sea together. Or he finds a way up and he hangs out with Simon too, or whatever. At this point, it's just headcanon what the hell happens with them. But there's just all these missed opportunities for just interesting ideas that could have came up. And the thing about Ashley, the, the chick he dreams about, we get nothing out of that. He just dreams about her, like, once and then twice, and that's it. It feels like there was supposed to be a little bit more to that, but we don't get there. It's just a wasted thing. There's a, there's a couple wasted opportunities in this game. The game was a pretty good ride, but when you go back and think about it, it's not really all that great. And this happens to a lot of uh, stories sometimes, is where they're good going through it, but then if you give some thought, it's like, no, not as good. It doesn't hold up when you really think about it. And that's how I feel about Soma, is it was a pretty good ride, it made me very uneasy, which is good for a horror game, you want to be kind of psychological and creepy, but in the end, like, eh, the hell. Like, there were just some opportunities there. That could have been done to make it more interesting or better in some ways. And now, for me, jokingly, I'm like, the wild becomes the overmind. And Jinx is like, she, she likes to think that sa satellite just goes out there and becomes the Borg. As the, and so, Soma is the, is the source of all sci-fi. 
But I like to think the WoW, because it's experimenting so much, it's, it's trying to experiment with flesh and metal in so many different ways, trying to preserve humanity and stuff. I think the WoW probably maybe figures out how to fix the Earth and maybe even not recreate, but um, bring back humanity in some way. I figure the WoW, because it's trying so much to try to bring things back, maybe it does. Or maybe it plays God and brings does bring back humanity, but it, in its own kind of idea of how to bring them back. Or maybe it does bring back humanity. Who knows? But I think the WoW's trying, so I think it's better we did not kill the WoW. And there you go. And maybe it ends up, it finds Simon 2, finds Simon 3, and they do whatever with the WoW. Who knows? Because the WoW has far reach, considering that... Alpha's at the bottom of the ocean, and you ch and I chose not to kill the WoW. Maybe the WoW will be a little appreciative of that. Maybe it will. Who knows? But the WoW's trying. It's uh, making some people suffer, but maybe it figures out how to preserve humanity better. Who knows? But that's what I'm thinking there. And that's Soma. That is Soma right there. That is it. Um, Next LP, I believe. Let's see. I think about it. Uh, you're going to already know what the next LP is by the time this uh, this comes up. And that's going to be a lot of fun. And then the LP after, I've made pretty clear what that's going to be. It's going to be uh, Fallout 4. And Fallout 4 is going to be a lot of fun because that's another post-apocalyptic game. But it has a different kind of charm. And there are kind of some horror stuff in Fallout. There's always been some creepy stuff in Fallout. But it's, it's more of a, you know, it's the future. But everyone's screwed. And there's kind of a charm to it. I've always liked the charm to Fallout 4 that Fallout has. And that's going to be fun to LP through. Uh, but before that, of course, is going to be... Well, you're going to see it already by this point. It's going to be um, uh, Legacy of the Void. So we're going to go through Legacy of the Void, then Fallout 4, and that's going to be a lot of fun right there. And that right there is Soma, and I think I explained as much as I could. There's, of course, a bunch of other characters uh, to talk about here and there, but eh, eh. We talked about most of them, at least the major ones. And there you go. That is that is Soma. That is the game. It was a pretty good game, pretty good ride, just there were some things that could have done, been done to make it better and more interesting in some ways, I feel, but not a bad job. They did a pretty good job with that game, so there you go. That right there is the LP for Soma. Had a lot of fun making it, it'll be a lot of fun watching it, and that's what's all about. It's Adam Fonix come by, and see you next time at StarCraft 2 with Legacy of the Void, and if you don't see that, well then Fallout 4. See you later.